Exits. Okay, there's one back here. And there's uh, probably one over by the wing somewhere, usually. And once everyone sees that there is no escape, the Fed must print or die, they will welcome the printing and they will take all the money that has been printed so far and they will send it right back to American shores. And that's when gold and silver will climb and climb and climb like there is no tomorrow because monetarily there won't be without gold and silver. And what about seat belts? Too fasten. Take the little end and stick it in the big end and you know what? If you guys don't know how to use a seat belt, just ring your call button and Tommy will come back there and hit you on the head with a tack hammer because you're a retard. Hey guys, Rafi here from The End Game Investor. And today I've got one thing to say. The same thing that caused the 1929 stock market crash is happening again. And I'm not just making a general statement here. I'm talking quantifiably, and I will show you the exact numbers and the exact charts that I am referring to. The same thing happened in 2008 and in 2015, August, July, August 2015 as well. And now it is happening in 2022 now June, July, 2022, except even more extreme than it happened in 2008 or 2015. I'm talking about the Austrian business cycle boom and bust setup. According to Austrian business cycle theory, what causes the boom is actually very simple. It is the increase in the money substitute supply. What causes the bust is the cessation of the increase of the money substitute supply. The more money you inject into the system, the more transactions happen, the more business is done, the more borrowing happens, and future resources are consumed until they are all consumed, and then you have a bust, and that brings down the money supply growth rate. When you think about this logically, it really is not that complicated. When you add drugs into a system, it speeds things up. When you take those drugs away, you have a bus. Same thing in humanity, in human bodies, same thing in the human economy. It's all the same principle. And so I believe we're within weeks of a major stock market crash, which will probably bring bonds and real estate, especially down with it, which will trigger the Fed's final pivot into expanding the money supply once again at unprecedented levels, which will kill the dollar. And I believe this will all happen by November at the latest at the current rate of monetary developments. And so, you wanna see what I'm looking at? Here it is. First, we're gonna go back to 1921 from Murray Rothbard, the famous Austrian school economist, his famous work, America's Great Depression, where he breaks it down very simply and numerically as to what actually happened. This table is from page 92 of America's Great Depression by Murray Rothbard. We see here the tabulation of the money supply from June 30th, 1921 until June 30th, 1929. The boom of the 1920s began in June 30th, in June 1921 around and ended in July of 1929. Now we see here, June 1921, you have the baseline and a 4.1% increase, a 9.8% increase, 4.1% increase, 11.6% increase in 1924, the first half of 1924, and so on he makes his calculations. And there is no significant slowdown until we get to June 1929, where the money supply growth rate slowed to 0.7%, basically a standstill. And now we can go into Rothbard's writing about what was happening here. Rothbard writes here, inflation of the money supply 1921-1929. It is generally acknowledged that the great boom of the 1920s began around July 1921, after a year or more of sharp recession, and ended about July 1929. Production and business activity began to decline in July 1929, although the famous stock market crash came in October of that year. So first you have a real slowdown in actual economic activity, and then a few months later you have the crash. Table 1 depicts the total money supply of the country beginning with $45.3 billion on June 30th, 1921, and roughly semi-annually semi after that. Over the entire period of the boom, we find the money supply increased by $28 billion, a 62% increase over the eight-year period. This is an average annual increase of 7.7% a very sizable degree of inflation. It came to an end in July, 1929, when the money supply stopped expanding. And a few months later, you had the October 29 market crash. Okay, so this is what happened in the 20s. Now, you will see that it also happened in 2008, 2015, and it is happening now in 2022. It also happened in 1987 during that stock market crash, but I don't have the numbers to show you here. Here is a chart that I could jiggered on what's it called excel by myself 
And it shows you the quarterly average money supply growth rate going back to 2006. Quarterly average means there is a number that comes out each week from the Federal Reserve of the total money supply. And never mind exactly how they calculated it. It's not exact, but I'm using apples to apples here, which is the point. And we're talking about trends, not actual. What is the absolute money supply? Because there is no true answer to that question. But there are trends that you can use as long as you are comparing apples to apples. Here we see. This is the 0% line. This is actual absolute deflation when the money supply quarterly is shrinking on a quarterly basis. See, it happened here in 2008. It just hit the 0% line. And through this, it went slightly below zero, I think about point, negative 0.1% or something like that. Absolute shrinkage of the money supply on a quarterly basis. That was in September 2008. Only three weeks later after that number was registered, you had the stock market crash of 2008. And the slowing economic activity of that year is what caused it. And it's a, it's a question of whether the money supply causes the bust or the bust causes the money supply. Generally, it's a dance, I would just say, not to get into the academic points here, but they dance and slow themselves down together. After the 2008 venture below zero, you had the money printing of 2008, which brought the money supply growth rate to records for that time, just below 20%. That was after QE1 and all the other stuff. And then you had another deflationary surge or deflationary crater, however you want to describe it. You can ask yourself the question here, why didn't the stocks and asset prices crash in 2009 when money supply growth rate was also negative here? And the answer is they already had. They were already deflated. And so another venture below zero wasn't going to deflate them any further than they already were. However, get to 2015 and we have the lowest venture here into the seasonal trough of money supply growth rates just above 0%. I think it was 0 0.4 or something like that. It was very, very low. It was time to short the market at this time. This was July, August, 2015. And if you remember seven years ago, there was a huge stock market crash in August 24th, 2015. It was called Black Monday. And I think the NASDAQ went down some crazy number, like a thousand points. And now here, obviously we see the big money supply printing bonanza of 2020, post COVID era, and then the deflation after the Fed stopped it for a few months. But now what is happening is we are at about 1.7% money supply growth rate. And within the next four weeks, it is scheduled to go below zero because seasonal trends for June show a static money supply usually in June. And that will bring the quarterly money supply growth rate below zero. And it will stay there for about six to eight weeks from my calculations based on seasonal trends. In 2008, it was only negative for one to two weeks. This time it will be negative for about six weeks or so. In 2015, it wasn't negative at all, and it still had a crash just like in 1929. The money supply didn't grow negative. It just stopped expanding, which means the bubble is going to pop once the expansion stops. Once the drug addict stops getting his higher and higher doses, he goes into withdrawal. So these money supply growth and shrinkage trends are seasonal, just in some seasonal areas, they get more exaggerated. So around June, July, August, you have the trough in money supply growth rates, but this year it is extremely exaggerated, and I will demonstrate here in this chart. If you look closely at this chart, you'll see these little bumps around the second week of April, and then these falls down after April into the last week of April. See here, you have a money supply in 2015 of 12 trillion, 12.1 trillion, and then a few weeks later, you have 11 point. 9 trillion. This big drop from April to May every single year. April here. 2016 pop of 12.84 trillion, and then a drop of 12.6 to 12.68 trillion. Same pop and drop here, same here, same here. And then here's the COVID printing of the money supply expansion. And now this here is the money supply peak at April 18th of 22.14 trillion. And then you had a huge fall of 21 to 21.7 trillion, about half a trillion dollars wiped out of the money supply in one week. You could ask what's causing this. I don't know exactly what causes it on the seasonal basis. I have a suspicion that has to do with tax day and the, and the government treasury account vacuuming a whole bunch of money out of private accounts into the treasury general account, which causes money supply shrinkage. And it is not going back up after this. Now we're going to go into three years, 2008, 2015, and today. The inflation and deflation of 2008 you have here. There is generally a money supply weekly trough in the last week of January every year. And so I'm measuring from that trough to the April peak and then to where we are now in the year, which is the first week of June, according to the latest numbers. There's a six-week delay on these statistics now. 
And so in 2008, we had an increase in the money supply of 4.6% from end of January to the middle of April peak, followed by a 1.1% decrease going into the first week of June. So 4.6% up, 1.1% down. What happened in 2015, the other stock market crash? It was a 3.73% increase, which is less than 2008, and a 1.5% decrease, which was more than 2008. So you had a worse situation here in 2015. It led to also a stock market crash, but there was a bigger recovery following that, which prevented a larger depression, which we saw in 2008. Now in 2022, compared to 2008, and 2015, remember 2008 was 4.6% up, 2015 was 3.73% up, 2022 was 2.7% 2 increase. That is the smallest increase of those three years and a 1.7.8% decrease from the peak to the current week of the year. That compares to 1.49% decrease in 2015, and 1.1% decrease in 2008. So this is the largest decrease and the smallest increase of those three years, meaning we are definitely headed for absolute deflation. The money supply is about to shrink on a quarterly basis. It's not going to take long from then until the next stock market crash. The question is how long is it going to take the Fed to react to that? How long are they gonna stand up to pressure to print, print, print more, 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 burr, burr, burr? To inflate, put it around your neck and yank down on the tail. <laughs> It's not going to be long. I don't think it's going to last for the rest of the year. And once everyone sees that there is no escape, the Fed must print or die, they will welcome the printing and they will take all the money that has been printed so far. They will send it right back to American shores. And that's when gold and silver will climb and climb and climb like there is no tomorrow because monetarily there won't be without gold and silver. This is Rafi of the Endgame Investor, hoping you like this apocalyptic comment based on the Austrian school business cycle theory. If you want more of this Austrian school style analysis of the monetary system and economics, then subscribe to a two-week free trial of the Endgame Investor or become a patron on Patreon where I go into biblical commentary on economic and monetary policy topics. I will see you guys soon. Okay, and life preservers. These we may need.